I start with 30% protein, about 30% fats in the diet, and then I put in 40% carbs. Welcome to the longevity and fitness channel. Number one, protein. One gram of protein per pound of body weight is plenty. That's uh, two grams per kilo is plenty of protein. And you probably don't need any more than that. You can even use less and still be adequate. But what's important is, is how much per meal. Getting 20 grams of protein per meal gives you about 90% of the muscle protein synthesis that you can possibly stimulate. So for most folks, that's enough, 20 grams a meal. But if you jump it up to 40 grams a meal, you're gonna get the other 10%. And so obviously that's what I recommend. 40 grams of protein a meal is optimal. I don't like to eat less because I don't want to inhibit muscle tissue repair and building. And I don't necessarily like to eat more because it tends to slow metabolism and it fills my body with calories that I could probably consume elsewhere that might give me a greater benefit. Stan Efferding is the author of The Vertical Diet Book. The Vertical Diet is the culmination of over 30 years of studying, researching, training, competing, coaching and dieting to improve body composition for optimal health and performance. Number two, fats. Fats are hugely important. All of the vitamins, A, D, E, and K, your fat soluble vitamins, of course, are in there, and those are hugely important, those micronutrients for performance and recovery. So I don't restrict fats. I don't believe in the, a low-fat program. They've actually shown that the higher the fats, the lower the body fat, the more fat that you lose in many, many studies. So I try and focus on getting a decent amount of fats in. And I use cholesterol-based animal proteins Cholesterol is more genetic. Whether or not you have an elevated cholesterol problem seems to be more genetic. And for the vast majority of people who don't have that issue, eating cholesterol does not increase cholesterol in the bloodstream. And cholesterol has a lot of benefits. It's what's used to manufacture hormones in the body. So it's hugely effective to use those kinds of proteins. The problem with, even with vegetables is, is that when you start to get those vitamins in your system, if you don't have a fatty courier, if you don't have some sort of fat to take them to the cells, Every cell in the body is surrounded by a fatty membrane and you need fats to penetrate that and to take those vitamins and minerals into the cell. So a lot of these foods come with cofactors that help you digest these foods better and utilize the nutrients and prevent excesses. When you take a multivitamin, it's very easy to build up an excess. And a lot of times those multivitamins aren't of the form that your body can utilize. And when you eat quality foods, they're in the highly biological available form and you use more of those nutrients. Stan studied exercise science at the University of Oregon and has been training professional athletes for over 25 years. Number three, carbohydrates. When I train an athlete, I adjust carbs based on their needs. And I use them to fuel workouts and to protect muscle tissue from being used as energy. Carbs are highly protective of muscle tissue. I'll use those for people who have a high workload. Now, if somebody's experiencing pre-diabetic situation where they're uh, hemoglobin A1C is elevated and their blood tests show that, that they're having a hard time with insulin sensitivity. I'll reduce carbs for a period of time, incorporate exercise to try and you know, fix that problem first. Some carbs that you utilize in your diet are easier to digest and utilize than other carbohydrates. And so we'll want to pick the right ones. When I'm doing weight loss programs, I tend to lower carbohydrates. When I'm doing weight gain programs, I tend to raise them. And when I say weight gain, I mean muscle performance. <laughs> so limit carbs. For weight loss, I increase carbs for weight gain. It's a huge component of my vertical axis for people to grow on, but I use a particular type of carbohydrate. Now we get to some of the differences here, why I use, you know, a steak and rice, you always see me using white rice. And that's because it's very easy to digest, and it, I can eat it in large quantities. Other foods like wheat, oats, potatoes, like I mentioned, they bring baggage with them. They have a lot of anti-nutrients phytic acid, lectins, things that cause a lot of gas and bloating, things that your body doesn't digest, things that are indigestible, that make their way into the intestines and then the bacteria that breaks them down doesn't really break them down, it converts them into methane. And that makes you uncomfortable and it, uh, it starts to affect your diet. So I use a lot of white rice and that's, White rice isn't terribly nutrient dense, but that's not what I'm using it for. I'm using it for the macros. I'm not using it for the micros. And I want to be able to take a lot of it in to fuel a big appetite. If I've got to take in 5,000 calories a day, and I try and take in a whole ton of brown rice, then my gut's just going to be exploded. It's going to be terrible. 
I never recommend more than, say, 50 grams a day, but I put it into these small 10 or 12 gram doses about three times a day. And my favorite way to get it in is just orange juice. So I'll drink three ounces, just a tiny little bit of orange juice, three or four times a day. And I've noticed on my blood tests when I do that, my liver enzymes come down. And I notice that my appetite improves as a result. But I'm not taking in so much that I'm creating any of the, the fatty liver problems. When I'm doing high carb intake, I use easy to digest carbs, such as white rice and again, some fruits to stimulate the liver. And here's some of uh, the carbs that I use to build a foundation, what I call the horizontal platform of my diet, because I want to get in all the micronutrients. That's really important. In Hoffler's diet, I make sure that he got in carrots every day, gets in some sort of vegetable. I like to throw in sweet potatoes because it's a root tuber as is carrots. Stan Efferding is an IFBB professional bodybuilder a world record holding power lifter. Stan holds a title as the world's strongest bodybuilder. For more longevity and fitness videos, don't forget to like and subscribe.